tenemos el honor de, de tener en, en este webinar al doctor Tarek Sharawi. Él es el jefe de la unidad de glaucoma y cirugía en el grupo de la Universidad de Génova. Él eh, obtuvo su, su master degree en oftalmología en, univers en la Universidad del Cairo y también su doctorado en medicina en la Universidad de Lucín. Se ha entrenado también en el Instituto de Investigación del Cairo y de oftalmología y completó dos fellowships en la Universidad de Lucén y Basel y es el actual presidente de la Sociedad Internacional de Cirugía de Glaucoma, que como sabemos estas, eh, estos este, congresos son, son muy muy buenos y dedicados solamente a cirugía de glaucoma. Es el miembro también del World Glaucoma Association y está interesado en muchas técnicas quirúrgicas de glaucoma, e interesado también en lo que es eh, glaucoma a presión normal y también eh, dedicado a la práctica de glaucoma en países en desarrollo. Él es autor y editor de siete libros de glaucoma y más de 120 capítulos publicados y también en, en artículos de revisión. Eh, nosotros seguimos mucho su, su libro de, de glaucoma, es más, me incluyo, que me parece increíble, como les dije antes de que se presente el doctor. Y bueno, tenemos el agrado de estar con usted. We have the pleasure to have you in our webinars with all the ophthalmologists eh, here that I'm sure they will enjoy your presentation. Thank you very much for accepting. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, as you have introduced me, I think you forgot something. You have forgotten to say that I'm a very good friend of Peru and of, <laughs> of, of Peruvian ophthalmologists. I, I have been uh, in Peru a couple of months ago and it has been an incredible experience for me. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and people are so kind. The country is so beautiful. Uh, it's really amazing. Um, let me see if I can share. Can you see my slides or not yet? Can you see my slides? Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Yes, I Are can you see it. Can you see my slides now? So, very good. Okay. So, uh, I've been asked to speak yes, about the uh, mix, of the, uh, black. the new era of mix yeah. and what does that hold for us and... Uh, Hold on. How about, how about if I do like that? Is that working well? Can you see well? Yes. Yes, I can see it. Yes, we sure can see. Too. Okay, let, let, let's do that again. Let's do that again. Okay, hold on. I'll do like right. this. And then I'll share. Yeah, now, now it should be working fine. Perfect. Yes, looks pretty good. Okay, very good, very good. So the classical types of surgery, as you know, are trabeculectomies, tubes, non penetrating glaucoma surgeries, and cyclodestruction. But this has changed with the introduction of all these different types of devices that you see in front of you, uh, all in, under the umbrella of what we call a minimally invasive glaucoma surgery or MIGS. And when you look at it from afar, it looks like a fruit salad of information, of things. It's very difficult to really make sense of what this thing is all about. So I start by classifying the minimally invasive glaucoma procedures and any, actually to classify anything, we have to, to agree on a certain, um, on a certain criteria. Uh, for me, if I, if I think of a criteria, I look at the different ways of people who are, have been have been classifying glaucoma surgery. Some classify mix or minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, and some people make a joke and say it's minimally effective glaucoma surgery. Some people speak about is the conjunctiva opened or not? Is the trabeculum being uh, manipulated or not? In, the, in terms of angle surgeries. Um, are we using an implant or aren't we using an implant? And finally, I personally like to classify according to strategy. So the four strategies to reduce pressure are, you know, a subconjunctival filtration or 
through the trabecular meshwork in a conventional pathway, going into the suprachoroidal space as you do, uh, you open the strategic reserve of the eye, or finally doing a cyclodestruction and basically uh, reducing the production of echoes. You, all, you know all that. Any of those four strategies can be applied ab internal or ab external, from outside of the eye or from inside of the eye. And based on this idea of, of, of classifying according to strategy or mechanism of action, then we have this tree with four branches, subconjunctival filtration, enhancing Schlem's canal pathway, suprachoroidal filtration, and cyclodestruction. And again, I would classify every branch into ab internal or ab external. Now, you know that the, most of the procedures that we know and have experience with are in the ab external approach, which are the trabecolectomy and deep sclerectomies and shunts. In this specific you know, branch, we also have the arrow, or now we call it the presser flow, or, and that's an ab external, or if we go ab internal, we have the Zen implant. Those are two devices that have been, have been commercialized, and I will go into a little bit more of details about them. And then you also have enhancing the Schlems canal, as you can see here, and you can go about it ab internal or ab external, and all those procedures are actually commercialized and in the market. So you can see that the options have become enormous from four options to all that. I didn't even count them. So let's discuss SciPass. SciPass is an interesting device because it's supracoroidal, but it guides us also into uh, a process where we can try to understand what is good and what is bad about mix. This, for example, is a device that is small that is easily implanted, that is uh, expensive, but not too expensive, uh, that, is, that provides reduction of pressure without resorting to a bleb. So it has everything to do with what we would like to have to reduce pressure. But it affects the endothelial cells, it fibrosis, and for that reason, despite being a surgery that is relatively easy you do a paracentesis and you throw the, the uh, implant in an injector and you put it, after, after filling the anti chamber with viscoelastic, you basically, uh, you know, throw the implant inside and put it into, into the suprachoroidal space. So a relatively simple procedure to do, nothing really that complicated. But unfortunately, it has been, as you know, withdrawn by Alcon from the market. Why? Because after three years of follow-up, there was a significant reduction in endothelial cells compared to doing FACO alone. So FACO versus FACO plus SIPAS provided more damage to endothelial cells when you were using the SIPAS. So that tells you something about what we're doing. We are introducing devices into the market. Companies are selling them. We are using them. And we are using them based on a follow-up of one or two years when after putting them for a few years, we find at the third year that it's not good enough and that we actually have to consider explanting it in some cases, which is very sad, but tells you how surgery and the marketing behind it can push into a direction that is uh, very enthusiastic, but not based on, on true science. I have been dabbling and interested in endothelial cell loss for many years. I've published a series of papers on endothelial cell loss and the cornea. This is, uh, uh, as you can see, a study that we compared uh, with the confocal module of the HRT, the endothelial cells, and we coupled that with an anti-segment OCT to look at the effect of, of, of the tubes on endothelial cells, and rightfully so, we could see a, a damage happening, and this damage is unfortunately prospective. So back to, to our branch uh, or our tree, and then let's take a, look, take a look at the subconjunctival root. Subconjunctival root and MIGS would be the presser flow or the Zen implant. Both provide what I call a hybrid bleb, a bleb that is actually, as you can see here, um, quite 
different from the blebs associated with herpetectomy or deep sclerectomy. Why? Look at this bleb. There's nothing around the limbus. It's posterior. It's not as posterior as an Ahmed or a Barvet, but it is posterior and it is diffuse and it is shallow. All that is a hallmark of a better bleb. So those morphologically are better blebs. The comfort of the patient is, is, is increased in a case like that. But we cannot put all devices in one, you know, in one basket and think they're the same. And we have to consider uh, issues related to the internal diameter of the devices. The Ahmed bulb has an internal diameter of 600 micrometer, while micro shunt is 350, and the Zen implant is 150. You know that the, the bore, the diameter, is the most important determining factor for the reduction of pressure. Now, uh, the length of the device as well. If the Ahmed valve has a tube that comes with 25, maybe two and a half centimeter. Of course, we trim it, we shorten it. The Zen implant is six millimeter and the micro shunt is 8.5 millimeter. All those are, are very interesting figures to consider when we are thinking of what kind of results would we be expecting. Here we're doing uh, an implant of uh, pressure flow and we are marking the sclera at three millimeters as you can see here, followed by a pocket into the sclera and that does not perforate into the thin chamber. So just a pocket with the, with the knife and we come out. And then we follow that by full penetration, as you can see, with uh, a needle. So we are going with the needle into the antechamber. And once we penetrate into the antechamber, as you can see, we slowly thread the device into the pocket. And the pocket is made so that you can uh, tuck those two wings of the device so that you prevent it from moving. That's relatively easy procedure, nothing too complicated, as you can see here. And uh, you can imagine how small those devices are if you compare a Zen implant to the Ahmed Bal. Here is a, a Zen, it comes in with this injector as you can see. And uh, there's a stoppage that we take out so that we can have the tip of the needle. And from, with an app internal approach, so we do our paracentesis, we go in, we stabilize, we stabilize the eye with another instrument through a second paracentesis. And then we inject the device pressing slowly on the injector, as you can see here. Now, this is how we, the microscopic uh, view, we are marking again three millimeters so that we have a range. And you can see that the eye is moving because I'm using a 5% cocaine eye drops. The implant itself is into the tube and we penetrate slowly outside or uh, penetrate the angle structures. We go into the subconjunctival uh, space and then we inject the implant. At the end of the procedure, we, you, you very much see a bleb that has formed. So, and you obviously remove the, um, remove the viscoelastic, and that's basically it. It's so it's a procedure that would take about five minutes, nothing too complicated. And you can see it here under the conjunctiva. You have to make sure that it is not kinked, that it is straight and uh, ideally into the subtenant space. They come with their complications. This is a device, this is a Zen implant that extruded, eroded, and I basically took it out on the slit lamp. I didn't even have to go into the, um, into the, the operating my, into the operating room to take it out. As you can see, it was really relatively easy to remove. Unfortunately, this patient, despite removing the Zen, he remained having a pressure that is low and that then went into a hypotony. And when you do a gonioscopy, you find a beautifully created supracoroidal cleft. So this fistula is, the result, is resulting into a severe hypotony. Just to show you that new devices come with their new set of complications that we are not used to. So back to, to, to our branch, and we look at briefly at other procedures, uh, and we think of the trabecular flow. The trabecular flow uh, is very interesting because we are going into the trabecular meshwork, into the Schrems canal, and we are not depending on a bleb. But we don't know what is happening in terms of wound healing in this area, 
And we know that the bigger the arc of filtration, the better the, height, the, the pressure will drop. This is the hydrous implant, you are aware of it. And the idea is to basically stick this nail, as you can see, into the, uh, through the trabeculum into Schlem's canal. And there are three models. There's the conventional one, there's the supra one that you can put supracoroidal, and then there's the inject one, which is the straight one that you put also into the trabeculum. And here is the hydrous implant, the titanium scaffold that you inject into the lumen of Schlem's canal, something very similar to coronary uh, stents, basically. And uh, if you look at the results of the hydrus, at two years, you have a significant drop, but this is between FACO alone and FACO with the hydrus. And you can see that FACO alone, you have about 19, the hydrus is about 17. So those are two millimeters difference. Now, it is up to you to judge if the two millimeter difference is good or bad, is it sufficient or not? Is it, is it what you're looking for, for your glaucoma patients or not? We will know better about trabecular flow as soon as we start using SLTs uh, and OCTs to really, sorry, OCTs to look at the, the filtration and the aqueous humor outflow. This will, uh, this will make us able to actually target the site of maximal filtration and put an implant there to be able to uh, reduce the pressure to a better uh, stand. So just remember that when, while you are making a decision, if you are, don't have solid data, you are actually depending on peer pressure. You're, depending, you're influenced by peer pressure, influenced by the guy next door and what he or she are doing. You are biased by your own experiences and you're biased by what you hear from your colleagues. So if, if we don't have solid data, then we are actually, if we don't have science, then we are in the, in the, you know, we fall victim to our biases. This is the cognitive bias codex that uh, is used by psychiatrists. And you know, there's so many of them, I wouldn't even venture to try to explain, but among all that, you will see peer pressure, one of the worst enemies of a good surgeon. So the glaucoma surgery has always been related to efficacy, cost, safety, and being able to combine it. Now, with the sheer volume of industry pushing and commercialization of all those devices, the situation has changed. Now, most of the cases in, in North America and Europe are now being done by FACO surgeons. So they need something that will be, that have a, a better visual preservation, that will be good in terms of comfortability for the patient that will have a short learning curve and that they combine and the cost comes at the end uh, now, the, uh, i wasn't this type of life to save my life is a uh, is solid sorry now look at look at the the amount of money that is being put in america into mix now almost 50 percent of the expenditure that we have in glaucoma is now in glaucoma surgery is now in mix something that is fairly new but it has taken half of the pie. Look at the companies that are reduce, producing the devices and look at how Glocus with eye stent is now controlling 25% and how Alcon that was the, uh, the main, you know, uh, the main player is down to 16% with Ahmed Valve company that is producing the New World Medical at 11%. And all those companies are looking at the fact that the number of diagnosed cases are significantly less than the number of undiagnosed cases. So the market potential is huge and everybody wants a piece of the pie. I wasn't... Now, this is one of my patients. And just to remind you that when we are going to decide about what we want to do for our patients, we have to align the surgical risk that we're taking with the degree of damage and with the rate of progression. Because if we are too aggressive for something that is mild, then we are not doing the patient any favor. And if we are too light on a very aggressive disease, then we're making a poor decision. Uh, the, here's my contacts on social media, if you are interested to uh, contact me. And here is my uh, telephone number um, and my mobile number. I'll be more than happy to uh, answer questions, to communicate. It's always a pleasure. As I said, I thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I am wishing the 
country and people of Peru all the best in this tough time. Uh, Peru and Peruvians are very close to my heart and I hope that, uh, that soon I will be able to take a plane and, uh, and come back to Peru. I have not yet gone to, uh, to some of the best places. So I, I'm, 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 I'm saving all that, uh, especially, uh, you know, the, the country is so rich and I always draw uh, parallels between the Peruvian culture and the ancient Egyptian culture because those are two cultures that are really, really deep in history. You cannot say that about yes. too many countries. So it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, I wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank you very much for participating and your, all your kind words. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, more, more than, more than. Are, are you able to, to answer some questions? Yes, uh, like yes. A few I, have, I have five, six minutes to answer questions. As I said, it's, 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 it's Ramadan. I have to cook for the family uh -huh. today. And yes. I already did a webinar and I have another one at nine. So it's a, it's a crazy day for me. <laughs> all right, all right. I can take some questions. So, all right, perfect. So what mix procedure do you prefer for a Shlem canal only? Um, for a Schlem canal only, my preferred would be an eye stent inject. Perfect, perfect. And there's also one question here. Uh, what is the advantage to put sen saptinum versus sub, subconch? Yeah, it's my belief that saptinum is going to work better being closer to the natural pathways that we know from, from BLEPS. Having said so, there's no evidence of, uh, you know, subtenant versus subconjunctival. There's no evidence. Uh, my the cases that worked better for me were subscleral compared to subconjunctival, subtenant, I mean, sorry. Mm, perfect. So in this time, we have so many options. Are you combining some mix in the same time of the procedure? No, highly unlikely. I think no? despite, I, I live in Switzerland and it's a very rich country, but still I will be shot dead if I put two devices, <laughs> they're too expensive. I, 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 I'm doing a lot of work with the Kahook dual blade now. I like it a lot, I've uh -huh. been using it a lot, uh, but it, I'm still in the learning, you know, learning more and more about it. Perfect. And for advanced glaucoma, what is your, in open angle glaucoma? but advance, what deep is your scleric. surgery? Deep sclerectomy. Deep sclerectomy, of course. Yes, yeah. of course, perfect. And, and now, in this time of coronavirus, what is your preferred method to measure the IOP? <laughs> Very good question, I'm using the eye care. Uh, I'm using the eye care tonometer, but I'm, when I'm using it, I'm wearing gloves. Uh, and then I take off the gloves immediately after use because we are very close to the nose and mouth of the patient. Uh, but I'm yes, not using a Goldman and I'm not using a, a new motoroma, uh, an air pulse. Perfect. So, Mirel, ¿hay alguna otra pregunta? Porque el doctor está medio apurado por el Ramadán. Eh, bueno, me parece que contest se contestaron las de la audiencia, pero... Sí, así es. Podríamos dar por terminada la sesión debido al tiempo del Sí, doctor? claro. Y de ahí hablamos un ratito, ¿no? Claro. Sí. Ok. Uh, so, doctor, thank you very much for participating in this webinar. I'm sure everyone that is fan of glaucoma uh, was enjoying your presentation. Thank you again. And I hope you can come and visit Peru and no Cusco. <laughs> I, I, I'm really hoping to do that. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm a big, big fan of your country. I, I, I have to say, some of the best food I've ever eaten. I, when I was there, I think Rolando took me to, uh, to a, a place. Can't you remember what's the place, but it had, you know, la, la, the chicken with the, with the brochette, a la brochette. That was brilliant. I, I love Peruvian food. Pollo so. la brasa. Yeah, exactly. Pollo la brasa. Exactly. <laughs> and and I, in my closet, I still have, I, I got a lot of chilies from Peru and I made my own sauces and, uh, and I got some excellent rice from Peru. So anyhow, I, I, I don't need to be attracted to come back. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Hi, Rolando. How are you? Lovely wow. seeing you. Hello, <laughs> I remember that chicken. Please, please stay safe, everybody. Please stay safe, everybody.
And I look Thank forward you. to you too. Take good care. Bye bye. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. 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 <clears throat> Boy. Aplauso. <laughs> Si fue sin el aplauso, si fue sin el aplauso. Así es. Bueno, este, sí, el que tenía el ramadán después me dijo que tenía que cocinar para toda su familia, así que estaba con el tiempo ahí medio corto, pero felizmente eh, se dio un tiempito para hacer esta presentación que estuvo súper buena, una revisión eh, de todo lo que es mix, ¿no? Pero como vimos en la más avanzados, él prefiere hacer una no penetrante que hacer eh, mix, no está combinando mix como lo hacen en algunos lados, por ejemplo, irnos al, 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 al canal y de repente mezclarlo con viscodilatación y trabeculotomía, eso no está haciendo porque me dice que si hace algo así en Suiza, pues le disparan, ¿no? Eso fue lo que dijo. Y, este, nada, esperar para, para que venga nuevamente a Lima. Mirel. Exacto. <risa> ya, Seguimos ya, ya. acá. <risa> Entonces, eh, yo creo que mañana tenemos una buena conferencia también, ¿no? Eh, de Augusto Paraños nos va, nos va a hablar acerca de la enfermedad ocular y si realmente murió la trabeculectomía o no. Y mañana prepárense porque es una charla mucho más larga. Sí me dijo que iba a ser más o Así menos es. entre 40 minutos o una hora, eh, pero tenemos mucha información del doctor Paraños, que es eh, súper buen expositor igual. Sí, y bueno, ahí el doctor Charek, eh, Tarek nos eh, avanzó un poquito de su preferencia en glaucomas avanzados acerca de la no penetrante, que él, eh, bueno, lo llaman la deep sclerectomy, y de eso nos va a hablar el doctor Mermut el miércoles, ¿no? Estuve hablando con él y aceptó pues la invitación, y nos va a hablar acerca de esta cirugía que ellos eh, la prefieren porque en sus manos va súper bien en controlar la presión. Y también nos va a hablar acerca del iWatch. Eh, chequenlo, él tiene un artículo y es, es un dispositivo de drenaje que se puede manejar eh, por fuera, ¿no? Es decir, eh, bajándole el flujo o subiéndole el flujo. Súper interesante. Bueno, después glaucoma infantil, que todavía no hemos tocado para este jueves, y, y el viernes vamos a tener... La contienda. Hay un, sí, una contienda entre Amet y Berbelt. Así que los esperamos con mucho gusto, como siempre, eh, todos los días, y que tengan pues, un excelente día. Un abrazo a todos. Pacho, muy gracias. Chao, Miguel, adiós. Un abrazo a todos. Muy bien, gracias chicos, muy bien. Gracias y hasta luego. No se lo pierdan mañana. Hasta luego. Sí, mañana nos vemos.